So one thing people say is, no, Bannon never leaked to me, and we never talked, but we shared a lot of mutual friends. So I've never gotten anything from Bannon, much to my chagrin, actually. It annoys me when people go, Bannon leaks to you, and I was like, no, I wish. He should. But I can tell you the truth now about everything, because I've been muzzled in a way just by mutual friends. So I have been... Um, so I can tell the truth about these pro-Trump super PACs. The New York Times had that story right. Those pro-Trump super PACs are being run by Pence. If you go look at the pictures of who attending, those are Mike Pence's super PACs. So the New York Times, as much as we want to call them fake news, I hate to break it to you. I didn't, I didn't want to you know, confirm the story. The New York Times did a big story about how those pro-Trump super PACs are really Mike Pence's uh, shell vehicles. And I was like, ugh, how'd they figure that out? That's 100% true. There has been a Pence coup for a long time. Mike Pence coordinated the, the Mitt Romney statement. You know Romney's statement about how Trump must issue this, do all this stuff today? That came, that came with, that was coordinated with Mike Pence. Mike Pence has been coordinating behind the scenes with everybody. Why do you think Mike Pence is coming in to give that Afghanistan meeting at Camp David. So let's connect the dots a little bit. What did I report last night? I reported this morning Bannon was out, actually. I don't know if I was the first one to report it, but this morning, <clears throat> this morning I reported everyone I've talked to saying it's Bannon's last day, though it's been Bannon's last day for every week, feels different. So this is a little bit, you know, hedging. So I can't, you know, I can't take a full-on victory I can't take like a full-on victory lap for that because that was – but that's but it was also true. It's true as everybody I knew said Bannon is out, and Bannon is always out, but this time is different. It really is out. And then you know, so I tweeted that at 8.26 a.m., and then you know, close to 10 a.m., you know, it hits the mainstream sites. But what I, So what I also tweeted last night is that there's a big meeting about the surge in Afghanistan occurring at Camp David today. So last night I reported that – last night I reported there's going to be a fake debate on the Afghanistan surge. McMaster and cabinet members practiced lines all week, which seemed like a debate scripted. So last night I tweeted that out. And then today Rosie Gray, who she does good work even though she works for The Atlantic, which isn't as prestigious as um, – Cernovich Media, goes, however, a document has circulated with the NSC and to cabinet members this week, according to a senior administration official who reviewed it. It offers notes for meetings ahead of Friday's showdown, summarizing a plan to convince the president to agree to the R4 plus S escalation plan. The document, this official said, characterizes the surge as the only credible option for Afghanistan. So as you can see, as you can see, that what I reported last night in a tweet, which is that there's going to be this fake debate, and this is why they wanted Bannon out. So I'll tell you the real true story about what is happening. There's going to be a debate at Camp David about the Afghanistan surge, and there's going to be pros and cons. Ira, get your butt over here. I'm going to go in like five. I just I got to update Bannon. It's breaking news, you know. It's just the world we live in. So. No, breaking news conquers all. We're actually, we got to go to a wedding, and we're, we need to get to a wedding, but Shauna said, love conquers all, and I said, breaking news. Breaking news conquers all. It's the world we live in. This is the business we've chosen. Isn't that right, Syrah? This is the business we've chosen, the business of breaking news. Anyhow, there's a big, there's a big right now meeting in Camp David about the Afghanistan plan, and it's going to be structured as a de debate. But it's a fake debate. All of, all of the lines have been rehearsed and have been scripted. And that's why they needed Bannon out of there because they do want that troop surge in Afghanistan. They, and I know Sarah Carter said Bannon told her that he resigned two weeks ago. And Bannon can say what – Bannon's going to say whatever Bannon wants to say now. Bannon's like me. He's a madman. Bannon is a 65-year-old version of Mike Cernovich. So he's he's gonna say whatever he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna say whatever he is gonna say. But regardless, so there's a big summit on Afghanistan. Do you want to stand up? There's a big summit on Afghanistan this this weekend, and they're gonna present all these options for Trump and the Afghanistan plan. But it's all faked. It's all rigged. So they're gonna have a quote debate, but the debate has been rehearsed. 
and they're going to push hard for the troop surge. That's why they needed being and out of there. And this is also part of Mike Pence's too. They're, they're now counting votes for impeachment within the Republicans. So a lot of people don't know that, but Republicans in Congress, they are counting votes for impeachment now, and they're, they're working to get rid of Trump one way or another. I, they're miscalculating, just like they, they miscalculated the Charlottesville thing. That, but it's a full-on coup now, guys, especially with Mike Pence. Yeah, so the GOP, they are counting votes for impeachment. Uh, Pence met with Mitt Romney to drive a wedge. Yes, baby, what? To drive a wedge in between this issue um, about Charlottesville. So Pence is using Mitt Romney as part of the coup. These pro-Trump super PACs are Mike Pence's more or less. Because I was told, you know, again, I have to be a little bit vague on how I, a little bit vague in what, how I say things. But I was, why do you think that I don't work with any of these pro-Trump super PACs? Have you ever seen me link to or promote a pro-Trump super PAC? So I'm a journalist now, so I don't, you know, I'm out of that game. But have you noticed that I've, I've never promoted any of these pro-Trump super PACs? So if Mike Cernovich has one of the biggest voices on social media, right, and you've never seen me promote any of these pro-Trump super PACs, you, you, it's kind of like the dog that never, uh, the dog that never barks. Uh, one of the best kind of thought lessons you can learn as a person is that it's the Sherlock Holmes, the story of the dog that didn't bark. And the punchline, spoiler alert, it's a 150-year-old story, so don't cry about the spoiler alert, is that Sherlock Holmes was able to determine who, hey, you want to talk, don't you? Or do you want to crawl around? You can crawl if you want to crawl. I just thought you wanted to hang out. You were looking at me like you wanted to hang out. But if you want to crawl around, I, I got no objection to that. You can go crawl. So the, the moral of the tale is the dog that doesn't bark is sometimes you want to look. You want to look at what people aren't saying. You want to look at the dog that doesn't bark, okay? Well, I was the biggest dog on the block in terms of social media. Did you ever see me barking for these pro-Trump things? Hey, hey, you're rolling all around. You're trying to pull down the tripod, babe. You can't pull it down. Why do you love the tripod so much? Why do you love the tripod so much? You can't pull it down, though, because it'll hit your head. So, you know, didn't anybody, didn't anybody kind of put two and two together and say, you know, why is it that Cernovich has never promoted any of these pro-Trump super PACs? Well, because I was told by people, hey, man, just so you know, don't, don't let these guys play you. These are all Pence super PACs. It's all part, it's all Mark, um, Mark, it's all Mike Pence Super PAC kind of thing, and that's why even when I was a pro-Trump guy, now I'm just a journalist, giving you the straight truth. So if, if these super PACs were pro-Trump, why was I not linking to them? Why wasn't I really trying to help them out? They're, they've always been. And if you look at who attends these events, it's always, um, it's always Pence. So the, yeah, the New York Times, the New York Times broke that story. And then Mike Pence goes, oh, it isn't true. So yes, the full-on coup is being led by Pence. Pence's people, Mike Bannon, Mike hate to admit it, but you're right yet again. Yeah, I don't know why you guys doubt me when I'm just right about so much. Because you don't want to believe the truth. But I'm privy to all kinds of inside information that I haven't released yet. And, I, and I'm releasing it. So I hadn't released the whole Mike Pence coup thing yet. And I never validated Here, let me find you the article in the New York Times. My God, I'm having to confirm the New York Times is reporting I feel sick to my stomach, but that my job as a journalist, my job as a journalist is to tell you the truth and not just to be a Trump, not just to be a Trump shill. So when the New York Times gets the story right, as a journalist, it is my job to do it. So let's find. So Mike Pence rejects reports that he's positioning for 2020, right? So the New York Times, they had this story right, but again, I didn't want to. Republican shadow campaign for 2020 takes shape as Trump's. Here, so I'll show you. The New York Times had this story right. So Mike Cernovich is, this is maybe the first time in history. Mike Cernovich is confirming the reporting of the New York Times. So the article said Republican shadow campaign for 2020 Take shape as Trump doubts grows. Okay, so this is the New York Times, and they talk about they talk about how those super PACs are actually 
being used for John Pence. And there isn't, they're not actually pro-Trump super PACs, right? They, they talk about, so yeah, that was, that was a true story. That was a true story from the New York Times. So Pence has been running a shadow campaign. They think, see, they're miscalculating because as, as we learned from the Republican primary, they don't actually know that the monuments are losing issue for Democrats. So here's what Mike Pence and Mitt Romney and all these people don't know. The, the monument issue is a losing issue for the Democrats. And I say that as somebody who, I don't know why people want to keep the monuments up. All right, I'm not Mr., you know, you've never seen me flying a rebel flag or anything like that. So I'm not like, keep the monument, we got to keep them. That's not the hill for me to die on, that's for sure. But if you look at the polling data and you look at the actual data, this is a losing issue for the Democrats. The Democrats are walking into a major ambush. They're walking into a major ambush over these statues and everything like that. But the Republicans, they think just like the Democrats. So they think, oh my God, these statues are bad. We have to take the statues down. Not realizing that, no, the, your enemies are walking into an ambush, right? The Democrats are walking into a major political ambush. They're going to be destroyed. Bannon was definitely not the leaker. You don't know what you think you know. They're going to be destroyed in 2018 if they keep up with this stuff, okay? Right? <laughs> yeah, so they, they're going to be destroyed. It's, it's a losing issue. Show them your teeth. You got a little teeth. You want to show them your teeth? Hey, 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 hey. Da, 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 da. Um, do you want me to move it or do you want me to know if you no, want to move it? I can move it, but I'm saying it's Where's safest. Where's safest? I don't know. I feel like maybe the middle just because it can get hit on either side, but I also don't know if, um, like, the middle is going to be hit on either side. I also don't know if, um, I think it's fine where it is. I feel like it's more secure on the side, though. Okay, put it on the side. Then. Like, it's not loose. Okay, yeah, put it there. Okay, so what was I saying, guys? Remind me. Cyrus, yeah, she's ready for nap time. Oh, you're ready for nap time. Yeah, Cyrus, Cyrus ready for a nap. We took a two and a half mile walk. I got this little baby Bjorn, so I strap her on. It's good cardio. Good cardio for me to walk around with her. Oh, but anyway, uh, 2018. People say, don't worry about the car. I say, come on, it's my kid, you know. Breaking news is one thing, but... So anyway, the, the Democrats are walking into a major ambush over these statues. So it isn't, it's a losing issue. People view it as an at attack on heritage, an attack on America, an attack on history, and it's a cultural Marxist thing. So, so it's going to be bad, but the, the traditional GOP doesn't really understand – the traditional GOP doesn't really understand that the, the statue is a bad issue. They don't understand that, sh that calling out the alt-left, as Trump did, was actually the right choice to make. Right? They don't actually they don't actually understand this. So because of that, they're trying to get them out, and they're counting votes, and the Republicans are counting votes. La 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 la. la, la. So they are they are counting votes, and they're, they're, it's a full on coup. Full, yes, it's a full on coup, a full on coup going on. It's just the way it is. You say who cares about the statues? A lot of people do. Here's the thing you gotta. Here's the thing you gotta understand. I'm just gonna teach you pure Machiavellianism, okay? Pure, pure Machiavellianism. Will Republicans gain one vote by tearing down the statues? If the Republicans go along with the tear down the statue campaign, will they gain one vote? Will anybody say, you know what? I always thought the Republicans were just bad guys and they're Nazis and they're terrible people, but now that they're opposed to these statues. You know what? I was wrong. We were wrong about the Republicans. We're going to vote Republicans. No. Okay, so they won't gain any votes. Will a lot of people, the Republicans, the same as the Democrats, right? So the Republicans, it's a losing issue. The, the Democrats are going to be slaughtered, metaphorically, not literally, guys, in 2000 and 
18, but the Republicans are too dumb to see this. So they're, they're going to they're going to lose badly, no question about that. And there's really nothing that anybody who has a brain can't see happening. Jared Kushner, yeah, Javanka, as they call it, they call uh, they call Ivanka and Jared Javanka. Javanka are running things, but yeah, again, I don't have. This is why I went to pro. This is why I'm just straight journalist. I'm tired of people going, oh, Trump is being sabotaged. I'm tired of the white knighting for Trump. Trump is a 71 year old man, and he led in Jared Kushner and Ivanka, who nobody voted for them. The base never voted for them. He let them become his chief advisors, and they gave him McMaster and Dina Powell and Gary Cohen, globalist Gary from Goldman Sachs. And he, so, so I can't be like, oh, poor Trump, poor innocent Trump. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm so sad. How bad is it? No, nah, bro, you, you got to own them choices, man. If, if you're going to rely on Javanka, if you're going to rely on Javanka for advice, even though Javanka never – if he would listened to them, he never would have won – then I can't be crying any, crying any tears for people. He's got to surround himself with other people. So the whole Trump as beleaguered victim thing, I, I, that's just not a narrative. It's just not a narrative on the support. You were on the train, pure opportunist. Pure opportunist. See, we got DSP LNC talking about ovens and stuff like that. Just the way it is. You, but you wanted me to, want me to tell you the truth about life? You're allowed to go one way and to go another way. You're, the biggest thing that you learn in mindset training is that your past is not your future. You can be one way one day, and then you know what? Tomorrow you can say, you know what? I've, I thought about things, and I'm going to take my life on a different course. You're allowed to do this. You're allowed to change. You're allowed to change your opinions. You're allowed to change your behavior. You're allowed to change your habits. It, it is an amazing thing to be a human being, to know that if you think that you were maybe mistaken or something wasn't right, you can, you can change. So how does Trump change? Uh, old habits die hard. <laughs> but So what I predict is going to happen is Trump – will be attacked on all sides. And you know what You know what um, Trump is great at? You know what Trump's greatest skill is? <laughs> Trump's greatest skill is responding well when his back against the wall, is the wall. That is Trump's greatest skill. Trump's greatest skill is just when you think it's over, he's able to flip it like a pretzel. That Trump is the comeback kid. So I don't think it's over for Trump. What I think will happen is Trump is going to be beleaguered and attacked on all sides. And then you know what he'll do? You know what he's going to have to do? You know what Trump is going to have to do? Just go full, full barbarian, full savage. So when all, the, when all the people like Javanka give him bad advice and everything he does is wrong, he's just going to have to say, Cernovich, I know you're not a pro-Trump guy. I know you're a journalist, but you need to come run comps. He'll just go full savage. Because at that point it won't matter when they're trying when they're trying to completely destroy you and and nuke you then you 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 have your own nuke so you just say you just say you know what we're just gonna go full savage we're just gonna bring in we're just gonna bring the barbarians in the White House so that that'll be that'll be the um, the comeback story of Trump is. He's like all right I tried to play it straight with these globalists let's just bring in the people that. The media is going to freak out about. Just get me, get me the people, the based people, the barbarians, the people that just don't care, right? That's what you do. You call, you call in people like me who just don't care, and you know that the media is going to freak out, and you know that the media is going to be, oh my God, Cernovich is a monster. Can you believe Cernovich? And can you believe this? And can you believe that? And you just say, we don't care. We're just going to fight like hell and fight like hell to win. So that's where and, and then we do things like pardon Assange and everything. But I'm a journalist, so that isn't that isn't my job. <coughs> do you want that? Do you want a little ice in that or what you thinking? No, do you want to pick it up and throw it? All right guys, Mike Cernovich, go to Cernovich.com. I have to hit the road, Jack. My daughter's <laughs> Oh da, da, da. my daughter's about to take a nap. She needs a nap. Hopefully other people have good periscopes and everything like this. But they're interesting times. Again, 